Hello and welcome to the second of five films about um, standard level atomic structure. Uh, this film covers a machine, usually a very expensive machine, called a mass spectrometer and we use this machine for weighing um, atoms, basically. And not only for weighing them, but also for seeing how many particles of a particular mass there are in a sample. So uh, what we're going to do in this film is we're going to look at the kind of the output that we get from a mass spectrometer, what a mass spectrum looks like, and we're going to look at the workings of a mass spectrometer to see how the processes that are taking place in a mass spectrometer actually lead to this output um, being produced. Okay, so first of all, let us have a look at a mass spectrum. What does the word mass spectrum mean? Well, spectrum is a range, and quite simply, a mass spectrum is a range of masses. And as you can see on this x-axis, we've got a range of masses. Okay. Um, what our mass spectrometer does is it tells us what mass the particles in a sample have. So there would have been a, a great big range, well, all the, what you can imagine, all the possible masses that a particle ha would have. But in this particular mass spectrum, so this is the output from one of these machines, the machine is telling us that there were particles that weighed 35 and 37 atomic mass units. Okay? What the mass spectrometer also does, which is very useful later on when we're trying to calculate relative atomic masses, is it tells us what the percentage abundance of these particles is. Okay, so it tells us that there's a lot more of the particles that weigh 35 and a lot less of the ones that weigh 37. And anything else, any other masses, seem to be missing. So there weren't any other particles in this sample. And not only were there more of them, but we can tell that there were 75% of the ones that weigh 35 and 25% of the ones that weigh 37. So that's what a mass spectrum looks like. That's the kind of graph that our mass spectrometer will produce for us. Let's have a look at how it's going to do that. Okay. Now, here is a simplified diagram of a mass spectrometer. Um, what you can see here on the right-hand side is an ion detector, and that will normally be plugged into a computer, which will produce the graph that you've just seen. Okay, but it's important to know the sequence of processes taking place in here. So you need to know these as facts and you need to commit them to memory. Okay, there are five stages that you will be examined and they are vaporization, ionization, acceleration, deflection and detection. Okay, and to cut a long story short, what we're doing in a mass spectrometer is we're starting with particles here and we're trying to get them to our detector. Okay, so in order to do that, in order to get the particles to travel through this tube, we've got to do a number of things to them, and here is the first of them, and that is vaporization. Now, if you want a sample to be able to travel through an evacuated tube, and you want it to be able to travel through there quite quickly, it's best if it's a gas. So your sample M is usually placed in an oven of some description, and that vaporizes the sample. It turns it into a gas. Okay, and now that the particles are all uh, widely spaced and free to move, we can hopefully get them to travel through this tube. However, they're all kind of moving in random directions here. And what we want to do is get them all traveling in one direction. Okay, so if we're going to do that, we need to be able to somehow get them going in the same way, right? So um, we could attract them to something and pull them all in in this general direction, but they won't be very easy to attract because they don't have any charge on them. So what we're going to do first is we're going to ionize the particles in our sample. We're going to do this by basically putting them in an electron gun. Okay, We're going to pass the gaseous sample of M through a beam of very high energy electrons, and what those electrons are going to do is they're going to knock electrons off our sample. Okay, and they're going to turn M atoms into M plus ions. Now, it is conceivably possible, or statistically very unlikely, that um, an M plus ion could get struck by lightning twice, I suppose you could say, or be hit by two electrons, and so our, it, you could get M2 plus ions travelling in here, but they're going to be in the minority. So ideally, what our electron gun is doing is it's removing one electron from each M atom and turning it into M plus ions. So that's the ionization stage. Now, once we've ionized the particles, the great thing is now is that if we have a negatively charged plate here, they're going to be attracted to that negatively charged plate, and they're going to move towards it very rapidly indeed. But what we're going to do 
slightly awkwardly for the particles trying to get to this detector is we're going to put a very narrow slit in this plate so most of the particles aren't going to make it through there at all they're going to smash into the into the sides of the plate but some will get through the slit and what that will result in is a very very narrow beam of particles traveling through our spectrometer okay so this plate is accelerating them but it's also focusing them okay but we're not asked so much about the focusing in the uh, exam what we are asked to know is that this negatively charged plate which attracts the positive ions is going to accelerate the particles and get them moving rapidly in this direction okay now that would be all great but uh, if we just got them moving all in one direction and put a detector here then they'd all hit the detector and it would be very difficult to tell one particle apart from the next so we actually put a bend in this spectrometer which may again kind of puts an op obstacle in the way of the particles and and means that in order for them to get to the detector they have to take a specific path through the machine now we deliberately bend this stream of particles okay and we do that by putting a magnet in its path okay and the magnet the magnetic field interacts with the electric field of the ions and it causes this stream to be bent now some ions will bend a lot because they'll be very light or they'll be highly charged so the lighter you are or the more highly charged you are the more effect this field is going to have on you okay the heavier you are or the less charge you have the less you're going to bend so we can de decide basically by setting our magnetic field exactly what mass and charge of particles we want to get through the spectrometer so some will just smash into this wall some will smash into this wall here and by using a particular magnetic field we can predict what mass the particles that are getting through the mass spectrometer will have okay in other words any particles that hit the detector then we know what mass they've got or our computer does okay now we should be able to make some quantitative predictions about the deflection so for example um, let's say I had um, carbon 12 atoms in my mass spectrometer okay and we had carbon 12 1 plus ions and carbon 12 2 plus ions now we should be able to decide which of those is going to def deflect more in the field and it's going to be the carbon atoms with or carbon ions with 2 plus charge because they'll be more affected by the field okay and not only that they should get deflected twice as much I should also be able to make some quantitative statements about their mass so let's say I had carbon 12 1 plus ions and lithium 6 1 plus ions the lithium 6 ions are much lighter and so they'll get deflected much more than the carbon atoms however if I change that into a carbon 12 2 plus ion this one's getting deflected twice as much because it's twice as light as the other ion this one's getting deflected twice as much because it's twice as highly charged as the other ion so in other words these two should experience the same amount of deflection and they might show up as exactly the same particle on our computer screen for reasons that we'll discuss a bit later on anyway that's the deflection stage we're kind of almost there our particle has made it round the bend and it's about to get through this slit and it's about to hit the ion detector and that's what detection is okay uh, electrical signal is generated by any ion that hits the screen in here and then that gets sent off to the computer okay so that was the fifth and final of the stages in our mass spectrometer remember you should know the names of every one of those five stages what order they occur in and what's going on what, what the purpose of those stages is okay so what we were hoping to try and achieve was to know the names of the processes taking place and the order in which they occur and what a mass spectrum looks like so that's the output from this machine okay now the next film is going to look at how we can analyze one of these mass spectrums so maybe don't worry too much if you're not 100 percent clear about what the mass spectrum is telling us okay but if you do have any questions you want to ask about this film please feel free to post a comment on YouTube or come and see me if you get a moment to do that.